There's a rock behind me, right in the centre of Stonehenge, that will be debated for a very long time, because quite frankly, what's recently been announced regarding this one rock changes everything we thought we knew about the capabilities of Neolithic people, suggesting they were far more advanced and interconnected than we could have ever imagined. So how could one rock completely rewrite history? Well, stick around to find out. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history, and on this channel, we discuss the unexpected explainable mysteries of our past. Welcome to Stonehenge, and let's get into it. In a paper published last summer, scientists made an astounding announcement that shocked the archaeological community. They showed that one particular stone at Stonehenge, known as the Altar Stone, didn't come from the local area. In fact, its source could hardly be further away, coming from the opposite end of Britain, all the way up in northeastern Scotland, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So how on earth is this possible? How did these ancient people transport such a heavy stone across such a vast distance? And and why? Well, to answer that question, or at least to attempt to, you need to know a little bit about the people who built this site, and the traditional view of the capabilities of this culture. Stonehenge is dated to roughly 2500 BC, though the famous blue stones may have arrived at the site as early as 3000 BC. This places it firmly in the Neolithic, or the New Stone Age. Neolithic Britain was supposed to be a land of scattered tribes, basic early farming and stone tools. These people didn't have the wheel, they didn't use metal, they didn't build cities, and they certainly didn't write. Writing was only just beginning to emerge thousands of miles away in Mesopotamia. In the traditional view, this was a society on the very edge of the known world, at the edge of history itself. Civilization was dawning, but not here. And yet, somehow, here is where one of the most extraordinary monuments of prehistory was raised, and it's just rewritten history yet again. Now, Stonehenge's construction is nothing short of astonishing. Even before this new ground breaking study was announced, the achievements of this structure behind me defy belief. The larger sarsen stones appear to have been sourced from the West Woods area, about 25 kilometers or 15 miles north of Stonehenge. Now, 15 miles is a large distance to transport stones weighing up to 25 tons each, especially when you consider the terrain between the source and the site isn't flat. It includes hills, rivers, bogs, and dense woodland, making the logistics very difficult. Most theories suggest they were dragged on wooden sledges, possibly using timber rollers, but still, moving 25 tonne stones across 50 miles of uneven, forested, river-cut landscape demonstrates a level of engineering coordination and manpower that defies typical assumptions about Stone Age societies. But even more remarkable are the blue stones, a set of smaller but still massive stones weighing up to 4 tonnes each, which somehow were transported not from this area, not even from England, but all the way from southwest Wales. A staggering distance of over 250 kilometers, or 155 miles. And that's not a straight shot either. It likely involved navigating very tough mountain terrain, or possibly using sea routes along the Welsh and English coasts. If true, this begs the question, how did they have boats sophisticated enough to carry such a weight? We have no evidence of such seafaring vessels. And then of course they had to haul them over land again. This isn't just impressive, it's an achievement that calls into question our entire understanding of these people's capabilities. Now, I'm here in the West Woods area, where the larger sarsen stones come from, and even though it's the closer location, it's still a huge distance. It took me over 40 minutes to drive here, and that was of course with a car on a road. Back then, the whole area would have been covered in woods and bogs, not to mention the hills and rivers that still exist. So it's truly mind-blowing they managed to do this, and when you consider the blue stones came from much further away in Wales, it all starts getting a little bit weird. However, even more astonishingly, a groundbreaking study published in Nature in August 2024, revealed that Stonehenge's central altar stone, previously believed to have originated from Wales with the others, actually hails from much, much further away, all the way from northeastern Scotland, a staggering 700 plus kilometers north of the monument. This stone weighs over six tons, so moving it this far is truly an extraordinary feat, and it raises a lot of questions. Dr. Robert Ixer from University College London called it shocking, stating that, quote, the work prompts two important questions. How was the altar stone transported from the very north of Scotland and, more intriguingly, why? There are obvious physical barriers to transporting by land and an equally daunting journey if going by sea. 
These findings have huge ramifications for understanding communities in Neolithic times, their levels of connectivity and their transport systems. He was backed up by Heather Sabaya, senior curator of the Stonehenge site, who said, quote, it is phenomenal that the people of the time brought such a large stone all this way. Basically, what this discovery suggests is that Neolithic societies possess the organisational, engineering and logistical capabilities to transport massive stones over vast distances, possibly via sea. And it highlights a level of societal complexity and sophisticated engineering previously thought impossible. I mean, the fact that this huge multi-ton block came from all the way over there in Scotland really raises some serious questions about what we've been taught regarding these people's capabilities. This new discovery, therefore, completely upends our understanding of Neolithic Britain. If the altar stone truly came from northeast Scotland, it means these so-called Stone Age people achieved an astonishing feat. Transporting a multi-ton slab that distance would require one of two options that seem impossible. Either an arduous overland journey or a coordinated maritime expedition down Britain's entire east coast through the notoriously stormy North Sea. Both options are mind-blowingly difficult, and yet they did it. This suggests not just transportation, but planning, communication networks, societal organisation and engineering far beyond what we've assumed. Add to this astronomers and knowledge of advanced geometry and you start to think, were this culture a lot more sophisticated than we thought? The monument is precisely oriented to the summer and winter solstices, creating a dramatic solar spectacle that still draws crowds today. This suggests astronomical knowledge and the precise, advanced geometry baked into the architecture of the monument thousands of years before Pythagoras is a complete mystery. How did they achieve this? Remember, they had no written script. But here's where things get even weirder. Studies show that Stonehenge may have been designed with acoustic sound resonance in mind, as certain frequencies are enhanced within in the space, and the dense dolerite stones ring like bells when struck. The altar stone is also a type of rock that has an unusually high metal composition. Did they know this? Is this why they chose it? Do we need to add geologists to their list of capabilities? I mean, seriously, why did they go to such effort? The questions it raises are as massive as the stone itself. But what it also suggests is that the people living at this time weren't isolated bands. The fact that all of Stonehenge's rocks originate from distant parts of the country suggests that Neolithic Britain may have been a far more joined up interconnected culture than we've been taught. And maybe that's not surprising. We see over 1,000 stone monuments from this period all across the British Isles. Sites like Avebury, Castlerigg, Boscoyon, Callanish, Long Meg, Bryn Kethlethi, and many others. And what's even more interesting is the fact that the altar stone came from near Orkney, where we find the Ring of Brodgar, Stenness, Mazehow, and more. Are we seeing the echoes of a culture that was more advanced and interconnected than we ever thought? In my opinion, we massively underrate how sophisticated and interconnected these societies were. Our thinking of this time period needs a huge update because all this stuff simply doesn't align with the traditional view. And when you zoom out, Stonehenge starts to look less like a local curiosity and more like part of a global phenomenon. Across the world, we find monumental stone structures that all share a common thread thread, precise geometry, celestial alignment, and in many cases, acoustic resonance built right into the stone. Alexander Tom, a Scottish engineer and Oxford professor, spent decades surveying megalithic sites and, astoundingly, he discovered a precise, recurring unit of measurement that appears everywhere, known as the megalithic yard exactly 2.72 feet or 0.829 meters, used in sites separated by oceans and vast time differences. This unit of measurement is far too precise to be random or a coincidence. Exact geometries, astronomical alignments, and Pythagorean triangles in hundreds of sites like Stonehenge suggest advanced knowledge of astronomy, geometry, and surveying far beyond what Neolithic people were supposed to have. Some sites even appear to align perfectly with Earth's axial tilt and the moon's 19-year cycle. So what are we looking at here? The conventional view simply can't explain this. Is this the remnants of a lost global system of measurement? Mainstream archaeology remains skeptical, but Tom's work raises valid questions. How did ancient builders achieve such precision, and why does this appear all over the ancient world? I think that prehistoric cultures may have been far more advanced and connected than we've been taught, and maybe, just maybe, we're only now beginning to remember. As for Stonehenge, 
Stonehenge, well, the conventional thinking seriously needs to be updated. These weren't isolated groups of primitive early farmers, no, I, I think they were far more advanced than we've ever given them credit for. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and if you ever visit the UK, I highly recommend you visit Stonehenge. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Give me a like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Thank you so much.